Please be seated. I'm going to date myself a little bit, but in 1992, myself and a whole new generation of music lovers were introduced to Harry Chapman's song, The Cats in the Cradle, when heavy metal band Ugly Kid Joe covered it on their debut album, America's Least Wanted. Now, if you're not familiar with the song, it tells the story of a father and a son and their relationship. The first two verses begin with showing that the father is too busy, too distracted by work and other things to spend time with his son. He misses his son's first steps. He passes on an opportunity to pay a catch with his son on his 10th birthday, and on and on it goes. But despite all this absence, the son is never angry or feel rejected by his father. Instead, he idolizes his dad and vows that one day he will grow up and be just like him. And he does just that. For in the next two verses of the song, we hear that now the father is older and he wants to spend time with his son, but now his son is too busy to spend time with him, too distracted by work and other things in life as well. And the fourth verse ends poetically with the father coming to the realization that his son had made good on that vow. He had, in fact, grown up to be just like him. And the reason that I'm reflecting on this song this morning with you here is that because the message of this song about the dangers of distractions and how they can lead us away from the things that are important in our it's the same message that we find in our gospel reading today from the Gospel of Luke, which is in the 10th chapter, verses 38 through 42. Now, our gospel reading this week, like our gospel reading last week, and will continue for a couple weeks here, comes from a section in Luke's telling of Jesus' story where Jesus is making his way to Jerusalem to face his destiny. But as he's making his way to Jerusalem, He's doing a lot of teaching, a lot of healing, because he really wants to communicate to his followers who he is, what he's about, and what his message truly means before he goes and he faces his death. Now we read in our reading today that at one point in his journey, he comes to a certain village, which is not named, and he visits two friends of his, two women, Martha and Mary. And Martha welcomes them into the home. Now, as you can probably imagine, first century Palestine, where Jesus was, was very much about reinforcing the very traditional roles of men and women. A man's role was more public, and a woman's role was more private. So for a woman in that day and time, the running of the home, the household, was her domain. It is the place where she was actually in charge, and nowhere else in society did she really have a voice. So as you can imagine, for a woman back then, her self-worth, her status, what people thought about her was all tied up in how good of a homemaker she was. And Martha has embraced this role, and we hear that in our reading. Because as she welcomes Jesus into her house, she is in hyperdrive, isn't she? She's busy running around, making sure Jesus feels welcome, making sure she shows proper hospitality, doing all the things that she probably needs to do. It's not said in the text, but we can probably elicit that she's cooking, waiting on people, doing all those things that she thought she had to do to be a good person in her day and time. Now, all this effort of being the great host is not really making Martha very happy. She's filled with frustration, anxiety, she's feeling overwhelmed. And in all this, she turns around and sees that her sister Mary is doing nothing to help her. Instead, Mary is just sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to him. So what does she do? She goes to Jesus and states her case. 
says, look, Jesus, I'm trying to make this a great experience for you, but Mary is doing nothing to help me out. And in order for you to have a warm welcome and to feel, you know, like this is a good time and hospitable occasion in our home, I need you to speak to Mary and tell her to get with the program. And Jesus lovingly refuses Martha's request. Instead, he tells Martha that it's her, not Mary, that is actually in the wrong here. For she thinks that she's doing everything that she needs to be doing. But truthfully, she's distracted from what really is important, which is what Mary is doing, which is spending time with their friend Jesus before he goes on and meets his death. Now, our world today, culturally, is very different than the world of Martha and Mary's. But as us as human beings, I believe we are not too different from Martha and Mary. And the reason I say that is because as human beings, we too fall into the trap like Martha. We too become distracted by things that aren't important. Now, sure, they feel very important at the time, and like Martha's task, they're very noble. But, truth be told, they really aren't that important in the grand scheme of things. But they seem important to us today, don't they? It's important that the dogs get enough exercise. It's important that we be productive and that we do a good job at work. It's important that we impress her or him or that we look like a good parent or that we're in the right clubs at school, or that we make sure our child has five to six activities each week so they can be a healthy and well-adjusted person. Or for me, the one trap I always fall into is, is everyone happy? Am I pleasing everyone? Because that's what I grew up as, as a people pleaser. And like I said, these projects are noble. These aren't bad things that consume us. But like Martha, Sometimes they tend to distract us from what really is important in our life. So the question for all of us today then is how do we know? How do we know we're focused on what's important or we're focused on what is a distraction? And I think this is why God gave us the gift of frustration, anxiety, and feeling like no one cares. Stay with me. Because when we start to feel those things, like Martha did. I feel it's a subtle wake-up call from God for us to pause and look at what we're doing. If I feel frustrated, if I feel overwhelmed, I feel like I'm doing something that no one cares about, maybe it's because I don't need to be doing it in the first place. And maybe instead of being like Martha, I need to shift and be like Mary and focus on what truly is important in my life and what really, at the end of the day, really and truly matters. Now, I don't know if this is true, but in my basic research of how Harry Chapman came to write the song, The Cats in the Cradle, I read that the song is based on a poem that his wife wrote about her ex-husband and his father and their relationship. And what I read is that initially, when Harry saw the poem, he dismissed it. He didn't think it would be a good song. There was nothing really to it. And he went on about his musical career. But after they had their first child together, he came back to the poem and thought it was brilliant and that it would make a really good song. And I guess it took having a kid for him to really understand the importance of what it means when we become distracted in our life from what is truly important. Now every one of us here as human beings will make the same mistake that the Father in the song and that Martha in our scripture make. It's just going to happen. We're imperfect creatures, be it sin, whatever label you want to put it on us, we fall into this trap time and time again. But thankfully, I believe that God gives us subtle wake-up calls to when we become distracted by things which are noble, but really aren't important. And these gifts can be frustration, anxiety, feelings 
that we're isolated, that no one's helping us out, and that maybe no one cares about what we do. So instead of seeing these as negative things, I think maybe we can see these as positive things. It's a way of God getting our attention and showing us that we're kind of following Martha in the story, where we need to move and be more like Mary. So we just go about this week, I think all of us should take a little bit of time, myself included, to say, where am I currently frustrated in my life? Where am I feeling anxiety? Where am I feeling overwhelmed, like I'm doing something that no one cares about? And ask ourselves, are we doing this because we're being distracted from something that's important? Or is those just feelings and emotions that we're just having? Amen.